Brick, you and I were talking, and we're talking about going, and this is, and I'm telling you, you're going to love this. Chris, go love this. Uh, you said there's no way that Curry would be able to drive down the lane unmolested. And the, word, the fact that you even used the word molested. What <laughs> do you think would happen if he were playing mm, ni- 80s, 90s? How long do you think he would I, last? I'll give you an example, and I could send you a picture. We're in the Western Conference Finals. I'm with Seattle. We're playing Utah. John Stockton, who I never really liked. I don't think anybody really liked John Stockton, but he was a great, <laughs> great player. And he comes in the lane, and I would lead with my hands like I'm going for the ball. I'll catch you with an elbow if I need to. You know, it's, it's what happens when you come in the lane and you go hard to the hole. And I caught him. I gave him 11 stitches, and he's walking away from me and blood's dripping down his cheek. And I'm 37 years old at the time. I can't do – I don't have much left in the tank. He yells at me, that's all you can do anymore, Brick. That's all you can do. I said, yeah, Johnny, but I'm still pretty good at it. Go fix your eye. <laughs> <laughs> so it was – so do you think the NBA – everyone blames us. Somebody said that we were bad boys. And I say, no, there's more guys like Brick and Scott Hastings and – and uh, some other thugs, Bill I'm going to say. Anthony Mason. Yeah. The list goes on. Oakley. But that, that lead now, you understand, these guys are worth $500 million. Some of these guys are worth what some companies are worth. You can't, you can't put, them on the, put them on their back. So when you watch, are you entertained by watching the NBA now? Yeah. Yes and no. You know, I, when, let me back up for a second. Where, where I put the blame – and the credit is on David Stern's shoulders. When David came in at 32 was the commissioner, the youngest commissioner of any major sport, he brought in his marketing genius. And prior to him and his marketing machine and genius, you had to win championships to be a superstar. And mm. you can go down the list of Michael and Larry and whoever, um, Magic. And then he came in and said, no, 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 no. You don't have to win championships the championships to be a, a, a superstar. All you got to do is have Wall Street like you and sell sneakers. We'll make you a superstar. So that's where I give them credit for making us all a lot of money. But the game's a little dishonest in my view, right? It's like anywhere in the world, on any basketball court, if you're a guard and you go into that forest of big men, you're getting hit. There's contact. Yes. Nowadays, it's like you just go unmolested to the hole and, I'm like, how is that? I don't understand. Mm, everybody, Frank Murkowski on the phone. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, I was looking at your career and checking out that you, you spend two years a couple of places, one year a couple of places. Uh, <clears throat> why was that? They just brought you in as a bruiser, or did you piss somebody off in front in the front office? No, well, I played 11 years for three teams. Yeah. Roughly. And the others were pit stops or whatever. But, you know, when I came in the league, I, all I could do was beat people up, just bang. <laughs> and I slowly developed a game. You know, by the time I left, I was, I was a legitimate three-point shooter. I shot 40-some per, 40 percent. I had both hands down low. I could shoot the mid-range. So I, I, had, uh, I had some skills, but I had to develop that. But when I first got in the league, I was just a banger is all I was. Oh, everybody. It, it, and definitely and a choker because you got me right around my choker throat. Banger. Yes, yeah, man. It, I, I, I was nervous. I was nervous. I saw it in and your all you eyes. You do is choke one guy and you become a choker. You, you become a choker. You get it, you get it going. <laughs> 